So guys, um, I've had three people approach me about setting up call centers in the Philippines. Uh, here's what I recommend. The hard bit about call centers is actually getting the contract, not the call center side. And to be honest, if you get the contract, you can get call centers to do the work for you. Now, the, the reason I would say that is, firstly, overhead costs are zero. Um, setting up costs, a zero um, at the same time the profit margins can be pretty huge uh, for example let's just call let's just call this project fish tank um, now for every fish tank you sell and this the reason I'm just saying fish tank is hypothetical it's just the first thing coming to my head um, you get say sixty dollars a lead right you give the call center 40 and you take 20. Now, the reason you keep that 20 is because A, you're bringing the hard bit, which is a new contract, but B, they may actually need things like dial lists and other things that you could then add on and hunt down um, to make it easier for the call centers, because not all call centers have access to everything. A lot of the dial lists they've got are out of date because they got them from other campaigns, etc. Um, now, the good thing about up-to-date campaign list is, first thing is, you got to realize they will steal your data, because they will. Um, but the second one is, every lead you get, you're making $20 on. Keep all your leads that you generate, every single one. And the first thing is, you sell the leads to whoever you get the contract with. Um, they probably haven't realized that they haven't signed a non-disclosure agreement in any form. So you, they pay, say, $60 per lead. You got five to six call centers with five to 10 people in each one generating your leads for you. Your main job is tracking the leads. Sorry about the noise, it's all the crickets here. Um, you then use your money and time to bring in more campaigns and at the same time sourcing good dial lists but then after the campaign is finished or give it a three months or whatever you then sell all the leads that you generated to other companies as aged lists aged is basically basically people that were interested in the product or bought the product in the past now fish tanks they may want another fish tank which is why the age list has got got value um, a solar panel system they may have got it quoted or whatever and not had it installed so they're still interested but never bought from the original company so that's why these things are value even if they've already been used by another company um, so you've got that now how do you get your leads well, the dial leads, um, I'm not going to talk, talk about it because <laughs> uh, it, it was quite hard to get some decent data, but there is ways of doing it and yeah, I'll push that to one side. But for getting clients, as a friend of mine in Canada does, he goes to conferences, he goes to events, he sets up a little stall and he works that way. Um, when we were doing solar panels with my uh, business partner in New York, his job was basically phoning around all the solar companies going, we, we do call, call center services, we can bring you leads, are you interested? And that's what he did. Um, he's now moved from solar because obviously the money dropped out of solar and sells um, oh, dialing, uh, what do you call it? I must be getting tired, too many steps today. Um, he sells the... Oh. Well, it's, it's like an electronic telephone call, basically. He sells the, uh, the, the call connection through the network, because you buy a switch, and then basically it routes the call and works out the cheapest call route. Um, and he does that. And he's still making probably $3,000 $3, a week just doing that. 
because uh, the switch, getting the switch costs about six thousand dollars. Then learning how it works and the other bits and pieces takes time. Not everybody can do it. Um, in his case, he's got somebody who can already do that stuff because uh, my partner in the U.S. is a salesperson. He's not. He's not a uh, electronic person. So that's the thing. You can find the leads. You can find different niches. If you're dialing in the Philippines, look for APN Network. Um, that's who I use for my dialing credit. I think I've still got probably about $250 sat on my account there. Uh, but basically, you can get a phone number for pretty much any country. And so if you're sat in the Philippines and want to dial the US, Australia, and want to have a US number, you can rig your computer, a bit like the old Skype calls where it'll receive your Skype calls, etc. But often the call quality will be better. Um, I'm going to do a video on how to build a PBX system. It's like basically the telephone exchange that you can have in your house um, using a Raspberry Pi, but that's another subject. Um, what else is there? Yeah, so getting your leads. You're going to have to cold call them. You need to understand how much your services are going to be. Talk to the call centers. Find yourself some call centers and get them to do the, the pricing structure for you. Tell them not to be stupid, because a lot of them are. When I say stupid, it's not that they're thick or mentally challenged or something, but in the, in the sense that they'll go, well, in Australia, they charge $20 an hour, so we want $20 an hour. They know they ain't gonna get $20 an hour. So you're expecting you to perform a miracle. Part of the reason people buy into this is A, is commission only, or B, the rates are low because the conversion rates rates are also pretty low that's why I compensated with that for the sheer volume of agents because um, some of the guys may only sell like five a week well, I'm not being funny I still make a profit at that but I get some guys that can close 15 deals a day but one thing I do like is actually giving everybody the opportunity to improve which is why I keep even the strugglers uh, stragglers along because uh, as long as they're trying and I'm making a profit anyway I don't care um, yeah you won't need to deal with that hassle unless you get this is where you get problems you get people abusive on the phones you get pe people lying on the phone um, the funniest one we got was a an American solar company sent me a call over from an Indian call center. And it's been sort of like an in-house joke with me and my wife for a long period of time. When somebody goes, it's free. Because the, the, the call was, somebody had asked how much it will cost, and the guy had gone, it's free. Everything is free. There's no installation charge, it's free. You know, da, da, da. Just book a uh, appointment and our agent will come there and they'll talk about the system all completely free everything was free no it wasn't <laughs> the, the, the whole thing wasn't free and that call center lost the contract over that call but the client sent me over because they wanted us to see the problems they've had with some bad callers uh, bad call center agents now the other thing you can do is actually ask for access to the live calls um, when I'm running my call center, I have two people full-time employed that actually listen to all the calls. They're hopping around the different phones and listening to the conversations going on. And they'll go and tap an agent on the, the uh, shoulder and go, you can't say that. Or um, the sales pitch is wrong and improving it. That's what they do. At the same time, if you're doing this remotely, get yourself access to that you want access to the dialer you want to see how many people are dialing you don't want to be sat there paying for 10 agents and only five are dialing and a call center is charging you an hourly rate and you go you only did five leads today and they go oh it's not very good today sir it's not very good today they're stealing your money they're stealing your clients money so there's a lot to take in take on board don't assume everybody's going to help you and be nice 
best, best assumption, everyone's stealing from you. Because if everybody's stealing from you, you're looking for all these problems and then you, you're basically plugging them as you go. You're looking for how to stop it happening. And then once you get it right, you're making money. Even when you're not listening to the calls, they're not sure if you are or not. Even if, you know, sometimes you can get access through CCTV to watch a call center. They are not sure if you're watching through the IP. They have no idea what you're doing. But then you hop in when it suits you unannounced etc and you may find stuff then you flag it up they start to realize that they're not getting away with so much because they have no idea when you're actually watching so instead of uh, chancing their luck constantly they start to just get on with the job that they're paid for um, now the reason I would say use other call centers is setup costs can be expensive finding good agents can be difficult and if you're not from this industry it's a steep learning curve. I know with a friend of ours, he, he was ahead of us in the game because he'd actually worked in other call centers as a supervisor. Um, he could do the sales and close deals, but had no idea on technology. So when his dialer went down, he was paying $250 a time for somebody he knew to log in remotely and fix it. I just spent a month learning how the, the whole thing worked and you'll see comments on one of the videos I did years ago where people are going I need help to set this up can you please um, like blah 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 uh, the reason being is these guys go I'll set up a call center I'm going to do this and you know what they suddenly realize a the support's expensive but b getting good support is much much harder a lot of these guys will just take your money and they'll leave it a complete, uh, not a mess, let's just say built to fail. Because there's certain scripts and things you build into the dialers, etc., that are constantly repairing and updating the servers. So it's constantly getting rid of old data, it's constantly updating things, it's pushing uh, data off the server onto archives and other bits and pieces that if you're not technology minded, you're not gonna know what it needs. But most of the guys I know that do this for money wouldn't bother setting it up unless you ask for it. Because they know in three weeks time, when you start getting problems, they already know what caused it. But it's not their fault. It's a bit like when you take your car in for a service. They go a five point service. Okay, we check the tire pressure, we check the air filter, we checked your water, we checked your oil, and we checked your fan belt. You go down the road and the power steering belt falls off. Well, why didn't you check that? It's not part of the five point service. That's what I'm talking about. It's not their job to do this for you. You have to do it for yourself. And that's why I say, if you're starting in this, bounce off other people. Don't start with one call center, get yourself seven. Because at the end of the day, once you bring in the contracts, start feeding different call centers, and instead of having 20 in one, get five in each. When they have power cuts, you just swap it to another call center. When you have a uh, problem with a call center, you can shut it down. Um, I've had it before where call centers have been offline for, well, two weeks, then come back and said, we want paid. I said, paid for what? Well, you, you, you paid for us to call. I said, you haven't called anybody. That's not our fault. We've had power cuts. We've had, our internet wasn't connected. So what do you want paid for? You haven't actually done anything. Now, you will get people that blatantly stupid that say, no, you'll just pay them because you'd agreed a contract and then they didn't even carry it out because they set it up in their mum's kitchen. And then when they got it up and running, the internet went down, or they've had a brownout, power cuts, or the server failed, all sorts of things that they're expecting you to just pay because they are unprofessional and didn't set up properly. Having seven call centers, you could drop that one like no tomorrow and get another one. The whole point in this is continuity. If you're, you're promising delivering 30 leads a day or whatever, 
and then you get this on commission if you've got seven call centers dialing for you they should be able to do at least 50 50 a day which means you're giving them more than they're asking for because a lot of this they don't want less they're happy with more but they don't want less um, another thing is some of the leads will be crap and this is why I say listening to the calls one of the other things you can do is actually ask to listen to each agent on a sales pitch and get them to sell something to you so you can pick your agents you only want the ones that can sell if you're starting new you only want the best if it's your own centre you want the best to get you started but then you want to start plugging the volume with new people that are learning off the other guys so hope that helps anyway I'm uh, back in La Mata I'm gonna go and buy my chicken for the day before the shops close take it easy